Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be creating a fantasy style modern menu with rendered characters that you can put in front of other UI elements, the highlighting so you can see something that which starts at grayscale and goes to color. And we're just going to add loads of different cool UI elements to make that modern look and feel. So I did create another tutorial which was really similar with these effects and you can check that out and I'll put the link in the description, but it was more of a sliced UI similar to the Call of Duty games. And I did record this entire video just a second ago and it took me ages and none of the sound was working. So please have some sympathy. <laughs> so become and support me on Patreon to get access to this project and over 145 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Check out all the links in the description for all the sales and savings and free assets you can make with my recent video that showed you everything for May with humble bundles, free assets and so many savings. Also be sure to like this video and be subscribed to always be kept up to date to what I'm creating. Now here I am yet again re-recording this like a nightmare but to get yourself started you can right click, choose UI and go canvas. Now on your canvas we're just going to name this our menu canvas and I'm just going to set the pixel size to scale with screen height. I'm just going to set this to 1920 by 1080. So now we can right click, go UI and choose image. Now I'm going to set this as my background image. So what I'll do for my background image, you can see it's in this and make sure you've got 2D selected or it might be on the left hand side if you've got a different version of Unity. Go to the background, select the anchor points, hold Alt and then press in the bottom corner to expand the selection. Now once we've done that, I'm just going to add my background image that I've got. This could be anything, this is just sort of like a, just a stylistic purple background. Then what I'm going to do is right click on the canvas again, choose UI, choose Text Mesh Pro. I'm just going to name this as my title. So I'm just going to name this as Fantasy Realms. It's a just a random name that I came up with. Then you can change your font. And I do have a tutorial on changing fonts in Text Mesh Pro. I'm just going to stick this in the top corner. Then I could do the top left for the anchor point. So it always stays in that position. Then from here, what we're going to do is right click the canvas again and choose panel. This time it's going to be a whole panel to hold all of the assets and objects that we've got in there. So I'm going to remove the image component because we don't need that anymore. And that's just going to be our main UI panel just so that it holds everything else inside. Now, in this case, we want another UI and panel. And this for this instance, it's going to be our top buttons container because it's going to hold all of the buttons that we currently have. We'll remove the image component for those three buttons that we had at the top, we're going to be able to change that. So now what I'm going to do is right click UI and I'm just going to choose image in this case. And I'm just going to pull this image over here and I'm just going to scale this out depending on how big I think I will want it. Maybe this size and I'll just call this my left button Then I'll duplicate my left button, put it on this side, keep it in line with the other, rename it to right button just so I can keep this really organized. I'm just going to duplicate the right button, put it in the middle and make sure they're aligned with each other. And I'm going to call this middle button. But what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to scale this one out slightly so it's bigger than the other two. Now in our top buttons container, we can add something called a horizontal layout group. Now if with that, we can keep it on default settings, but for the child alignment, we want that to be middle center. So they're perfectly even. Now we can add top padding so we can choose how far or high it is on it. So I will pull that down slightly here. Then what we can do is we can adjust the spacing. So how far or close they are away from each other and they'll always be the same uniform spaced apart. And so we could put it something like that, whatever you want that to be. Now we've got our buttons all arranged, ready to go. So with our left button, what we want to do is we want to add a mask component. So a rect mask 2D. So everything of a child of this button is going to be masked off. So with that being said, we can right click our left button, go to UI, go to image. And then with that said, we can name this our masked background. And then what I can do is I can add one of my backgrounds. So we can add background for and make sure we have background selected and preserve aspect. And we can scale this up and down depending on where we want to position this image that we have. Then what I'll do is I'll duplicate masked BG 
and we rename this to masked character. Now in this slot, what I'll do is I'm just going to add one of my characters that I've got, which is all these are just sprite, but these are cut out. So I'll add warrior two. And now with that being said, you can see that he's appeared there. So you can place him wherever you want. You can scale him down, scale him up, put him wherever you want him to be positioned. He could be really a giant, so you could just see sort of his face. Now, again, we want to add the text. So I'm going to right click on the button again, choose UI and then choose image. So I'm just going to have this as background to my image text. So I'm just gonna put this to the top, scale it all the way across where it snaps and then scale it up so we could fit some of our text in there. Then I'm just going to name this our title text BG, right click that, choose UI and choose Text Mesh Pro. Make this show this text is black so you can see it and then have the text as new game. I'll change the font like I did before by clicking on the font style. Then I'll just rename this text to the title text. Then I will just grab the edge and just scale it out so it'll fit nicely in the box. I'm just going to put this directly in the center a little bit off the edge. Now, one thing that you can do with any of your characters or any of the objects that you're masked, if you put it below other UI elements, it can go over the top. So say we wanted him to be over the top of our background for the title to make it a little bit more dynamic, we can do that. But now we want to make sure that background is black and white. So what we can do from there is we need an effect. So now we can use Mob Sakai's UI effects, which lets us do blurs, grayscales and lots of really cool things. So to get hold of that, you can go to the top corner where it says code, copy the git URL link. Then you can go to window package manager. Then in the plus the drop down here, you can say add package from git URL, paste that in, click add. It will add it from wherever the repository is. And then you can click to update, install, whatever, and I already have the effects in there. So once that's in, I can select the masked background, add the component, and I'm just gonna set this as UI effect. And now we can go to the effect mode, go to grayscale, and then you can see the effect factor. Zero is colored, and one is black and white, and you can see it there. Now with our left button, you can see that we need to be able to control that. So what we want to do is we want to add an event, an event trigger and we can add two new events, so on pointer enter and on pointer exit. We can add two events to one event each to those and then add the masked background into each of those slots. Then once we've done that, we can select the method, which is UI effect, affect the effect factor and zero was fully colored and one was black and white. So when we enter, we want it to be colored and effect is again, effect color and we can set that to one. And now you can press play and you can see that when I highlight over this object, but you've got to imagine that you might have some navigation issues between the actual objects that might be in the way on your UI. So the best thing to do in this case is select all of the things that are not relevant to be clicked on and remove Raycast target from them and only have Raycast target for your absolute entire button itself that should be on. So that's the only thing that should be interacted with or taken into account with the interaction. So now we've done that for our left button. I'm just going to duplicate this with control D and drag it into the right button. And you can see that everything's unmasked at this point and running free. So we can go to the right button and make sure that you add a 2D rect mask again. So you can see now we're masked off. We can select the title text and make sure that it's nicely snapped to our object. We can change the mask background if we want. So I could change this to my version five, put this wherever I may want, adjust the text. So we might want this to be in this case to be multiplayer. Then the mask character could be a different character that I want to choose. So it could be my mage style character. We can select our text and just scale it out so it fits nicely. My mage character is masked off. We can scale that wherever we want. So it'd be a little bit over the background if you so wish. And then because we'd copied it from the other one, it's got the black and white already set up. Now we can go to our left button and make sure we go to event trigger and copy that component. Go to our right button, select one of the objects with a little three dots and paste component as new. But remember, you need to add the new object. So that's linked to the wrong masked background so we can just add the new ones in for the right button and do UI effect 
and effect and then UI effect and effect factor and it remembers how it was before and now if you press play we get that highlight between them both and again you can do exactly the same thing for the middle button we can duplicate add them in add the mask add a new background grab the character place the character in here I'll change the character like so bring the character up grab the title text snap it here scale it across grab the actual text itself you can place that in this case all the way to the right hand side maybe and again grab this character and make sure they might be centralized on your position and go onto the middle button paste those components again you need to make sure you change the masked background effect and go to ui effect effect factor and do exactly the same with the other and then you can press play and you get that same selection with each but remember that you can add a button component to any of your actual main buttons or on this event type you can say point to click if you want it to work as a button to go somewhere else but then what you could do as a quick note to do the next so you can right click that main UI panel again go UI and choose panel and I'm just going to name that to my lower button container then right click on that object go UI choose image and again I'm just going to set this roughly the size that I want so I'll scale it out scale this down slightly I might duplicate this across to the other side duplicate it across again to do the middle scale it down and then with the container what I'm going to add is the horizontal layout group again we can make sure that again it's middle center we can adjust the top spacing and then we can adjust the spacing between them all but also it affects where in the actual stack each of these objects are so make sure your middle or your middle one is actually between the two so you get it to match evenly and of course we can adjust the top to make sure that we get roughly the same scale but then you can do exactly the same thing so you can grab all of the different elements from that button drag it down into the lower image grab that original image make sure it's masked and then you can do exactly the same thing depending on what you want that to look like so then before you know it with a little bit of messing around and tweaking you can make a menu look however you want change the backgrounds characters colors text and anything but i just think you get a dynamic sort of modern look which you could use in your game so do let me know what you think of this and if there's any improvements you've got be sure to comment down below and you can get this entire project and over 145 on my patreon so come and support me there do come and join me on discord if you want to chat check out my great assets on the unity asset store along with bonus discounts on my website for all those fantastic assets and then thank you to all my patrons but a special thanks to peter steiner raheem whittaker tanyanlin david 76 sam romani gene pomye naigoyan matt cindy dino zach manos Berakas. Terence Conrad, Gade Linston, Dr. Walter Dunson, John John Games, Joseph Newman, and Randall X. Thanks to every amazing person who comes to watch this video. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.